For doctors, getting information quickly can help save lives. So having the most reliable network really matters. Verizon lets them monitor patients at home and use real-time video to consult with colleagues. Keeping patients healthy is what drives doctors. Being their partner drives us. Hi, and welcome to Telehealth Connection TV, a new series brought to you by Verizon for Hims TV. I'm Kat Jurisich, Senior Editor at Healthcare IT News, here with Dr. Silvia Perez Prato, Medical Director at the End of Life Center at the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Perez Prato, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for having me. So I'd love to get started by talking about what are some of the ways at the End of Life Center that you're using telehealth and other tools to help patients with advanced planning for end of life care? One of the things that we implemented now with COVID was the care program at home. Uh, the name is Care Companion. Mm -hmm. So on the second day of this program where patients are at home with COVID, quarantine themselves, and they are entering their data there, and the second day, there's uh, all the information about advanced directives. If the patient has advanced directives in the chart, we actually say, hey, you, thank you for thinking about this. If you want to review your document, you can do it here. Uh, and if you want to ad update it, you are able to do it yourself or you can call someone to help or so there are many options to do it. Uh, if the patient doesn't have advanced directives in the chart, we actually uh, send a message a little different. And so we explain why they are important and we give all the um, elements to um, educate the patients on what they are and what are the documents in Ohio and then mm -hmm. all the options how to do it and to get help. And actually many patients have called our center in order to get help to complete the documents. So the, this is all taking place via video, these conversations at this point because of COVID? Well, yes, yes. So if they call to this number that is actually from Office of Patient Experience, it's spiritual care. Uh, there's a chaplain that is trained to help wow. patients to do this. And they do it everything by, via uh, video, yes, video conference. What are some of the tips you have for providers in terms of demonstrating empathy in situations like this? Obviously, advanced planning can be very emotional for people, even if they are not uh, needing it in the immediate term. What are some ways that providers can connect with patients, even via telehealth? I myself, and I am an intensive care doctor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do e-hospitals. So we treat patients and families of the critical patients that are uh, located in another hospital. So we connect with via camera with the nurse at the side and the family and the patient, sometimes to have mm -hmm. cause of care discussions using camera. And it was very hard for us to start these Sometimes in the middle of the night, you, are, you, you get a patient in the hospital and you need to discuss cold status, what to do if the heart stops, all these type of things. So we started working on this concept of bringing empathy through the camera uh, when we started the e-hospital many years ago. Oh, wow, okay. So one of the tips I have, if you are using the camera, uh, is trying to uh, make eye contact looking at the um, uh, <laughs> video, uh, the camera itself, and it's so hard. Even now I'm trying to do that and I know <laughs> because I look at you. Uh, so it's so hard, but uh, we explain that this is important. However, one thing is to bring towards that problem. So we, we can say, you know, I know that it's hard for me to make eye contact with you. I wish I were there with you. So some words and phrases can help to say, I know that this is not the ideal way, but I, I put myself in your shoes and I know that this is hard, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure I, I am doing the best I can. Sometimes putting your, your, your hand in your heart is a way to show that you care and you are uh, showing your empathy in that conversation. Of course, the, the voice, your voice, making pauses, all those things are very important to uh, to convey empathy. So we divide the empathy in uh, verbal cues and, and uh, visual cues, right? So actually with COVID, because we were doing everything virtually now, so what we did was uh, to have a, like a guide with tips that helped us 
to remember all those things. So you mentioned the hotline that patients can call if they run into technical difficulties. What are some other sort of technological hurdles that you've encountered with the Care Companion app or any other kind of telehealth for advanced planning for end-of-life care? And how do you overcome those hurdles? Yeah, one of the main issues I find is sometimes uh, I got patients who said, you know, I don't even know if it's an iPhone or an Android because I was asking because we had some uh, iPads in the in the ICU to connect to families when we didn't have any visitors at all in the ICU. Um, so even sometimes the, the families don't know what technology they have. So sometimes we go directly to phone calls and, and say, you know, we make it simple, let's do a phone call, and then help them, helping them to understand who they can contact to help, to, to get help. And for example, in that case, we ended up, uh, a, this, the granddaughter of the patient came to help the, the wife of my patient. And then uh, she was able to connect and help the, you know, the grandmother on how to connect with us every day via video. Mm -hmm. And she was so thankful that, that she was able to see uh, her husband via camera but at the beginning you know the troubleshooting is you know let's call and then figure out what resources there are in the uh, at home in order to connect so I think I think patients and families value that we care and we are doing an extra mile to get connected right and I think that is already a lot for them and of course it's very uh, difficult for us as caregivers when we are in this side trying to connect with the families and being unable to do it. So it has been, I think, that part of COVID has been the most difficult for us, uh, mm -hmm. not being able to connect as we used to do. Sure. Do you think that you'll still rely on as many of these telehealth tools after COVID? In general, the world has changed, right? We know that we can do many things that we didn't think about before. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to change. Uh, even as a patient, I, I, I tell you, uh, for me, it's much easier to connect with my doctors via you know, telehealth. Uh, I think it's, it's for access, it's easier uh, for, for connection with your uh, physicians. Uh, we have my chart where you can uh, send messages to your physicians and the nurse or the, the, the physician answers you. You can see your uh, labs. Uh, I think the transparency is much much better now because we we are seeing everybody seeing the same things in the chart in the hospital or at home from your patient portal, right? This was before COVID, uh, but I think COVID enhanced the needs, and then we had uh, speeded up many processes to have more telehealth available. So I think once it's there, and we are so used to it and even sometimes people think that um, adults or, 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 or geriatric population are not going to embrace this and actually they are and uh, so we have to be able to meet patients where they are and many of them are so happy with this and they will imagine instead of uh, getting your car out in the middle of the snow you're going to have your doctor on the phone I think if we don't need to do a physical exam for a follow-up on medications or whatever we are doing, it's, it's amazing. So I think we change, yes, and, and it's going to stay many of these things uh, late for later. That's wonderful. Is there anything we haven't talked about yet that you think is an important part of the discussion? Well, I think uh, for me, it's very important to empower patients to do things instead of us telling what to do. Uh, I think technology can help us to bring the information to patients and then the patients to be able to do themselves many of the things. So for example, uh, we uh, adopted the conversation project as a way to having the conversation with your loved ones when you are healthy, right? About your end of life wishes. Mm. So having those 
um, uh, uh, questions in your patient portal and then one day you are looking at everything and you see that and you open it and you say oh wow I never had this conversation with my mom let's say or I never had my conversation with my husband so empowers you to do it right so I think uh, using telehealth to empower patients to do this type of things in the right moment uh, on the other hand, uh, when patients are seriously ill and they are thinking about their end of life, um, sometimes we have uh, questions that help us to understand the patient's goals, values, wishes, concerns, worries. And we ad adopted the Ariande Lab uh, toolkit uh, with all the questions that are validated by research and, and by patients themselves. I went to a patient advisor group and they actually some of them said, I want to answer those questions myself, thinking of them in my couch, and I don't want someone to rush me on the answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we actually offer those questions in my chart as well, and we can push them to the patient when uh, we have the discussion and say, we want to know more about your wishes and worries. Uh, do you want to have a conversation now, or you want to answer themself, yourself back at home? And then we can send those there. And then we are making the way to bring them to the chart. Once the patient is done, they can submit and we can read what the patient wants. So these are the things that I, I, I think are very important that we need to know the patient's goals and wishes in order to adapt and offer treatments that are aligned to those wishes. Thank you so much again, Dr. Pettis Prado. This has been an amazing conversation. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Thanks so much for watching Telehealth Connection TV, brought to you by Verizon. For doctors, getting information quickly can help save lives. So having the most reliable network really matters. Verizon lets them monitor patients at home and use real-time video to consult with colleagues. Keeping patients healthy is what drives doctors. Being their partner drives us.